Hey, welcome back to my channel. From an earlier video, you may recognize I stated this Minus 4 mini PC is serving as my Docker host. Although hugely more powerful than my Raspberry Pi 4 I started out with, I may have finally hit my performance limit and it's time to upgrade slash migrate. I began with 7 to 10 Docker containers on my Minus Forum mini PC. However, over the past several months, I've discovered and added more containers that have been very useful, which has ballooned my container count to 48. While it still seems to handle it, I have noticed some of the processes to have slowed in performance. Shopping around, I found this very capable B-Link mini PC on Amazon at a reasonable price with much more processing power coming in with a Ryzen 7 5800H, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 500 gig M.2 NVMe SSD, and Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 on board. I'll just go ahead and unbox this now. We've got branding on the front, nothing really on the end. The main specifications on the back with regulatory logos and QR codes for video tutorial and forum. And CPU RAM storage info on top along with the B-Link logo. In the box we have the user manual in color. Pulling out the accessories box, we have a long HDMI cable, a short HDMI cable, Mickey Mouse AC power cable, the AC power adapter, VESA mounting bracket, mounting screws, and the mini PC itself. The plastic covering has a nice warning about not connecting to the network for account setup to avoid being forced into signing in or creating a Microsoft account. Here is the top of the box with a central vent. The front, from left to right, has a pinhole to clear the CMOS, two USB 3 Type-A ports, a USB Type-C port, a 3.5mm microphone headset combo port, and the power button. On the left side, it's just ventilation. The back has three larger ventilation holes at the top, and from left to right, there is a gigabit port, another USB 3 Type-A port, and below it, a USB 2 Type-A port. Then we have two full-size HDMI ports, and finally, the DC input power. On the right is more ventilation. And on the bottom we have two holes for the VESA bracket, a rubber pull tab, rubber feet running the entire length of the left and right sides, and regulatory labeling. I happen to have a spare SATA SSD to install, so while at it, let's check out the inside. First, flip the box over and unscrew the four corner screws. Then pull the rubber pull tab to pop the bottom plate off. The first thing we see is the tray with the fan cooler where we can easily mount a SATA drive. To get deeper into the box, we will first need to remove these three screws that are holding the tray in. Then the drive tray comes right out, but be careful as there are two cables attached underneath. Speaking of those cables, I will go ahead and unplug the fan cable for now. Underneath the tray you will find the NVMe SSD covered by this thermal pad, and our two 8GB DDR4 sodium modules. I will now unplug the remaining SATA cable to prevent any damage. I have already done it, however, you would need to remove the two screws here in order to lift the motherboard out of the enclosure.
and underneath we'll find the heatsink and blower style CPU cooler, the CMOS battery, and two Wi-Fi cables attached to the inside top of the enclosure. Oh, and the power button popped out. Now just put it back together in reverse order. Before I completely button it back up, I will go ahead and install my SATA SSD. Simply match the SATA connector orientation and slide it in. Finally, reinstall the bottom plate. Again, I chose the B-Link Mini PC because the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H that comes in this model is far superior to the Intel Celeron J4105 processor in my Minis form. Here's a comparison of the two processors on CPUBenchmark.net listing their respective specs, their CPU mark scores, along with a few other ratings aggregated from thousands of performance test benchmark results. And this is a comparison found on userbenchmark.com with statistical info submitted by actual users creating a large data set to compare against, giving a more accurate feel of how your hardware will perform when compared to other users. This final site I checked is from cpubenchmark.org. Again, comparing detailed specs along with benchmark scores from the likes of Cinebench, which I also ran to compare my results against. Although my Ryzen 7 scores are lower than what is posted here, they are still markedly higher than those of the Intel Celeron on my current mini PC. For the heck of it, for any interested in light gaming in a portable package, I ran a few gaming benchmarks. I replaced the game audio with YouTube's free-to-use music to prevent any copyright strikes. So, here's World War Z running at 1080p at low presets. Here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also running at 1080p at low presets. In the video, you will notice some really bad tearing two-thirds of the way down. I'm not sure why this is present in the captured video, as it definitely was not there during the actual benchmark. I mean, there was some screen tearing, as I'm sure some are familiar with in gaming, but that is not the case here.
and the final game benchmark I ran was Horizon Zero Dawn. Again, this was ran at 1080p at low presets. Just like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in this video capture I encountered another but different anomaly. Instead of weird tearing, the captured video is stuttering or jumping when not present in the actual benchmark. All the captured game footage was performed with what is built into MSI Afterburner. Lower demanding games will play great on this mini PC, and while World War Z would be perfectly playable at 1080p on low presets, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Horizon Zero Dawn, and likely similar titles would be barely playable at the settings demonstrated. They likely would be playable just fine if the resolution was dropped to 720p and or AMD's FSR technology is enabled in game titles that support it. Actually, it would be a much better experience if that technology is enabled. In my case, I'm not using this machine for gaming, so the gaming limitations do not affect my usage. This mini PC will serve as my newer and more powerful Docker host. I plan on migrating the more taxing containers to the B-Link and keep only a few lighter containers that don't change much or static backend services running on my Minis forum. If any of this information helped in deciding on a mini PC for whatever your own personal use case or watch just to kill time while in line or in a waiting room, please give this video a like. Comment down below what mini PC are you using and what for? And thanks for watching.